my high school experience is not similar to that of uh, the majority population of students that you know attended Sacred Heart at the time or even now. Um, I was not prepared for college really when I got to when I got to college. Um, if I'm being real, I really got into Sacred Heart by the skin of my teeth and um, kind of had to fight to really get out of this mindset of mediocrity when it came to education and when it came to um, academia, right? I, I didn't see the value in education. I didn't see the value in academia. When I came to Sacred Heart for the first time uh, for orientation, I was like, desperately searching for another person of color like around me because it seemed like I was just like a dot in a sea of just straight white people and I, I was looking and looking and I couldn't find anyone and even when I did find someone like after countless times like searching it was it was almost awkward because we were the only two. And I remember looking up SHU BSU because I think at that time when I was looking for schools, it was in the wake of George Floyd's death, and there was like a, a lot of rise from schools having pages from their BSUs or like black at this institution. And I looked it up for Sacred Heart and I didn't see anything, which was a slightly concerning because it seemed like there was no presence for kids like me. It's kind of like you're outnumbered sometimes in like your opinions and the way that you think. And sometimes you might like, think that maybe you're wrong because you're not the majority. So that makes it hard to differentiate like what you really think and what you're conforming to. Oh, what sport did you play? Or even when I worked um, as an admissions counselor, the statements would be, I, I would get these statements uh, from parents like, oh, what, what team do you coach? I'm like, my name tag says admissions counselor. <laughs> So, you know, you have these maybe stereotypes or assumptions put on you before you even get to get a word out. I'd really like to see more athletes come and support our meetings because I feel like there are a large portion of Black students that are athletes. So if they are open and willing and coming to meetings, that will boost our club and promote it more. You know, a lot of people can come and learn about Black culture black students and um, what it's like through living through our experience. I mean, black people love everybody. We, we invite, everybody loves our culture, right? Everybody likes rap music. Everybody likes our movies. Everybody likes the dances and stuff like that. But th not everybody wants to talk about the real issues when it comes time to talk about the real issues. I think that BSU is a great way for us to discuss issues that we deal with on the, the daily and after discussing them, we can come up with ways to tackle them and educate people who want to be educated like allies or other people of color. I'm not interested in talking to people who want to debate me. I'm not, I don't like that stuff. I want to talk to the people who are interested in changing. So as a retention chair, first and foremost, I'd like to grow that club for the black community first and then grow it on campus. I've seen it go from five people last year to having about 20 to 25 regular members every week, which I think is a lot of growth, but I think that we could strive for more. I feel like I'd like to see more faculty and staff also involved with Black Student Union. Um, there's not many Black staff that work at Sacred Heart, so I feel like having a support from the white faculty would be important. I think that the school should listen to their students more. I know it's easy to like let the majority take over like what you're you're hearing, but I think that they should pay a little more attention to the minority because um, even though we're small, we have a big voice, and we deserve to be represented and heard in what we're struggling with.